Bombardier is described as the company that provides the goods to get people moving. In 1937, a young inventor, Joseph Armand Bombardier, had success after many years with his B7 snowmobile. Continuing his quest for easier transportation over snow, he created the world-famous and hallmark product of Bombardier, the ski in 1959. In face of the 70s oil crisis, the company began to divide its eggs in more baskets. Bombardier started by manufacturing several hundred cars for the Montreal subway system. And with the job well done, Bombardier began to prepare their diversification. By the mid-80s, with a steady bankroll from quality work, the family-run business started acquiring aerospace companies from Canada, Ireland, and the United States. This trend would continue for Bombardier to spread over 29 countries at this present time. This year, Bombardier reported profits of just short of $20 billion and continues to be a world leader in rail and aerospace technology and transportation. The majority of sales takes place outside of Canada, and for that reason, Bombardier is one of the most identifiable Canadian companies to foreigners. The future Bombardier is looking good, poised in favor of new adaptations required for a neutral carbon footprint. Although the initial hallmark product of the ski was sold in the 1990s, Bombardier continued to be an integral part of Canadian culture and its presence will continue to help the world function, crossing long distances and helping to do such. Prior to 1997, there was little efforts on developing sustainability. At that time, companies were mainly focused on two things, profitability and growth. Unfortunately, like many other companies, Bombardier only put environmental and social concerns on the agenda after the Kyoto Protocol. Being an international enterprise, Bombardier needed to do something, even though its host country, Canada, did not sign the treaty. Throughout the 1990s, Bombardier followed certain environment protection programs and initiatives like ISO, International Organization of Standardization. But other than that, there was little involvement with any other organization that pressured companies to act as environmental stewards in their business endeavors. Their small, their small participation in the ISO of environmental management systems began to create the foundation of what was to come in Bombardier's future. In 2003, upon signing an international charter for Union of Public Transport Sustainability, a requirement was to provide an annual sustainability report. Three years after this signature and joint, joint venture, um, in 2006, the first sustainability report of Bombardier was released to the public. This involvement helped the company to address issues that were emerging and Bombardier followed by involving themselves with much more other programs and organizations such as the following. Consumer Perceptions Before and during the 1990s, most businesses had a singular approach. It was profit. The environment was clearly not in their conscious range, and the consumers were not aware of the immediate, tangible consequences. Once the environment became a clear issue for the customer, many corporations cleaned up and acted to maintain a positive image of environmental stewardship and societal accountability. In personal experiences, my perception, attitude towards Bombardier was that of a successful Canadian company that was innovative and had its roots in the snowmobiling industry. Growing up living in close proximity to the snowmobiling industry, I noticed that Bombardier and its snowmobiles have started to decline in sales. It began that it no longer had a direct attachment to snowmobiling. As it progressed, 
I saw that Bombardier more and more was going towards transportation and aviation. How it impacted the environment at that time and what it was doing to prevent those impacts were not at all, at all in my state of mind. If you would have asked me what Bombardier is doing about the environment, at that time I would have been speechless. I would not have had a rebuttal. As of now, my perceptions, like the majority of people, have grasped a new perspective on how to rate a company. I believe that many Canadians view ExxonMobil and Bombardier in very different lights. It's almost black and white. Even though some simple things will fabricate our perceptions, we now base success on different dimensions. Perhaps in the 1980s, our black and white comparison of Exxon and Bombardier would be the opposite. It could be good to reflect on how we viewed Exxon Mobile before and after the spill. Severe impacts on the environment and violations against humans really stand out in the public eye. Even till this day, we remember the oil-covered duck. If Exxon would have really put profits into rectifying its image by contributing to something of environmental value, would we have a different perception of the company today? I say yes. Also, if Bombardier had a similar incident, I hope it recovers by going above and beyond to make wrongs right. In this project, I learned that very few companies viewed environmental concerns a pressing issue before 1997. A pressure from government and third-party activist groups began the movement, but it wasn't in full force until the consumers became aware. Those corporations, once the consumers were aware, actually began to place goals that would reduce their effect on the environment. As for emerging companies, basing your growth and profitability on both green, green money and green earth, will give the foundation for prospering in the future. A couple things to help this transition. Educate your young customers with green living concepts. Partnering with programs that give you valuable information and help reduce your carbon footprint. Advocate implication of the government and policy for green living. Also, reform the system of subsidies in the government. Encourage communities to act on green living habits. Reiterate to your company about environmental values. Hire environment sensitive management. Thankfully, a strong number of the populations are asking new questions about what makes a good company. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.